Hey, and welcome to Sar Trail. I'm Jeff and this is... Bailey! We are on an overlanding road trip. We're heading over by Telluride, Colorado, which is on the western side of the state. And we're gonna be hitting Imogene Pass. We're gonna be camping out there and having a really good time. So if you're looking for family-friendly, family adventure stuff, give us a thumbs up, click that little button to subscribe to our channel, hit that bell also, and be notified every time we put out some family adventure stuff just for you guys. Thanks. So the drive from Montrose to Telluride is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you go see jagged peaks to red rock outcroppings, and it's a really beautiful drive through farmland, along some rivers and creeks. So if you're in the area, do this drive. It is super nice. Okay, so from Tomboy Road, you're gonna be up that road, it's, I'm guessing about a quarter mile, that's what it kind of feels like. And then you hit this sign that talks about Imogene Pass, that it's high, high clearance four by four vehicles only. And there's our trailhead. So now it's time to hop onto Imogene Pass. We're gonna start telling you all about this pass and what to expect along the way. Okay, so the start of the trail, we are almost a quarter mile into Imogene Pass now. Mostly just dirt road, a little bit rocky. Um, really the thing here, the challenge is, is to keep on the road while looking at the incredible views. It's really gorgeous up here. You can see waterfalls off in the distance. You can see Black Bear Pass. And then looking down onto Telluride and the other huge valleys that we see on the other side with some packed snow or glacier. Can't tell which it is from here but really just gorgeous. Okay, at three tenths of a mile, you're gonna come to this. I'm not sure what that green grass area is down there, but the view over there is amazing. That's Black Bear Pass over there. We got Steep Canyon down here. This view is really, really stunning. This is what makes Imogene Pass really just a super, super amazing trail to hop on. Okay, so at seven tenths of a mile, you come to your first real switchback. And this is where we're starting to gain our elevation now. Uh, so far at this point, at uh, three quarters of a mile in, we're just coming into rocks, no real obstacles at all. Uh, any 4x4 with high clearance, uh, a stock vehicle at this point would be just fine. But uh, we'll keep you informed as we go along, as we get closer to a mile in. So we hit the trail at 50 PSI in these tires. We're dropping them down to 25, just soften up the road. I don't think there's going to be any traction issues on this trail, but we just want to make it a more comfortable ride. Okay, so at 1.65, between 1.6 and 1.7 miles, you come to this massive, massive switchback with this huge cliff behind us. And it is super, super gorgeous. 
And there's also some waterfalls. Bailey and I are gonna walk over to them because I don't think there's a parking spot over there. It gets really narrow. But we wanted to go take a look at these waterfalls before we drive through them and we can't stop. So this waterfall cascades down well over 100 feet here to get down to ground level. Trail passes over it. And then down the other side, it just carries on down. Not so much a waterfall, but carries on down nice and easy. Check it out. This is what hardly any other mountain pass has to offer. All right, we got a couple Wranglers coming. We're gonna pause and let these guys come by. One thing today, there's been a lot of dirt bikes, a lot of Wranglers, a lot of mix of different vehicles. No other Hummers yet that we've seen today, but uh, really awesome 4x4s we've seen out here today. So it's super cool. How's it going? Yeah, that thing's built really nice. Check that guy out. Dirt bikes are coming through as well. Another Wrangler, a Cherokee, a Toyota 4Runner. It's really a good mix of vehicles. I don't see anything here that is bone stock. Everything here at least has larger than stock tires, if not a lift and some suspension upgrades. So close to three miles in, you get up to a bunch of mining structures. You know, they're all broken down structures from way back when they were mining. But it's so much mining history up here. It's really, really nice. And, uh, and you can look down here. These are the big massive views. Really, really gorgeous.
So we are up at the Tommy Boy Mine and Savage Basin Camp. This is what kind of like the mining town. There was a general store, a school, um, barracks, housing up in here. And this was all the finished construction on the town in 1894. It was then sold for $2 million in 1897. I wonder what it would sell for today. Because it's huge. This is an enormous area. It, you know, it's all destroyed now. You can only see just the remnants of what this town was. But it was big. You would not expect at 11,000 feet to find a town this size. So this here is a massive structure. You can see the poured concrete foundation. This wall, kind of a retaining wall it looks like. And then huge columns here. These are just massive, massive columns. Makes you wonder how much gold is still in these mountains. How much gold is just in this stream right here. My guess is there's a lot. You just gotta know how to get it and be patient enough to get it. from our base camp we had a good night's sleep a little bit chilly for Natalie and I we're gonna need a sleeping bag or a little bit warmer gear but not bad certainly good enough and Bailey and Nana stayed warm in their sleeping bags they were prepared <clears throat> we heard some it sounded like wolves overnight and a little bit this morning but take a look place is really really gorgeous you sleep good stayed warm getting your watermelon <laughs> all right so Natalie and I are gonna be making some coffee over here Breakfast? Yes, yes, yes! We're doing pancakes because that was Bailey's idea. Let's do pancakes, let's do pancakes! Okay, so last time you saw us, we were up camping at the old mine site um, on Imogene Pass. We were gonna continue that mountain pass and camp for another night, but Bailey, while exploring, stepped on a nail, got a nail stuck up in her foot, and that pretty much ended the trip for us. We need to go get her taken care of. Wanted to thank the good doctors down there in Telluride for getting her cleaned up and getting that wound bandaged. 
getting her okay. And now we're heading home because she doesn't need to be out in the dirt and in the sand and in the rocks. She needs to be off her foot. So the only way to get her off the foot is to get her home. So thanks a lot for checking out Sar Trail. Sorry we didn't have more camping and overlanding for you, but sometimes you gotta take care of the little ones when they get banged up. See you guys next time, thank you.